something that uh, the public ought to know. Is there a uh, question in there somewhere? Yeah, why, why would you be for this? Why would we be against it? You're a public person. Yeah. And uh, if I'm in the t talking to one of my constituents, I, well, you, you may believe that, but I suspect that most public officials and public employees uh, would have an objection to having their telephone conversations recorded, having their office conversations recorded. If you don't have any objection to that, then you're for the bill. That's fine. Representative Mandy, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks for taking my question. I do believe that public servants also have several roles. I can speak about myself. I'm an uh, elected official. I have no problem when I'm representing myself as a state rep or when I'm representing myself as a mother. I wouldn't want to have a conversation with my child. Is or, there a question yeah. in there somewhere? So the different roles, so there is no privacy in terms of a public servant. How would the public know if I'm working as a public servant or my role is as a parent when I'm in a public space? That's a good question. I, I, I don't think, I mean, technically, I don't think the bill would allow someone to record you while you're talking to your child, but that, that would require them to know when to turn the tape recorder on and off. I, I think it, it just creates a nightmare. I'm going to jump in here in just a second. Uh, like I asked the other other uh, witness before you on, on line four, it says at least one party consent. That eliminates the two party consent rule in the state of New Hampshire, which means as long as I want to record you, I can record you at any time doing anything at any place. Would you agree with that? Well, you and I are having a conversation. You can you can record that and. I think that's less a concern for the municipal association from our perspective, but that is a huge change to the wiretapping statute. Thank you, President Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you uh, for your testimony. Uh, the New Hampshire AG's office is now going to investigate the voter fraud in New Hampshire because of Project Veritech, you know, James O'Keefe's group. Right. I'm assuming they didn't have the consent of those people in Portsmouth and Hanover that they recorded. Um, how do you feel on that? Not, not that familiar with, uh, all I know about that is what I read briefly in the, I think it was in the Union Leader this morning. Um, if it's based on <coughs> conversations between two, I should say the Municipal Association doesn't have a position on the issue of recording, uh, if you and I are having a conversation, whether whether I should be permitted to record that. And I think that's, that's the kind of situation that you're talking about. Um, that's not really, I think that's a privacy issue for private citizens, and that's not our issue. Our, our issue is about recording of government officials and the performance of their jobs. So, so I'm not sure that we have a concern about the issue you're talking about. In, in just one follow-up. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, well, these were elected officials at the ballot, you know, place in Portsmouth, Hanover, and I think there was one other, you know, that were showing people how to kind of skirt around the law. And, and because of this, and because of their taping, you know, do you disagree with their taping, you know, these people not knowing that they're being taped, but now the AG is looking into the voter fraud system. If it, if, if it was, if, it, if these were public officials yes. having a conversation with voters or purported voters at the polling place, which is a public place that, that the public has access to, I don't think we have a problem with that. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. President uh, Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. And I've been thinking about this question uh, carefully in an effort uh, that when I ask it, I don't aggravate the chairman. <laughs> if 
there, there, there's that uh, you know there's that phenomenon. I don't know if it's a phenomenon of paparazzi, who uh, basically stalk celebrities, and it's uh, you know they, they refer to them as a stalkerizing now. In uh, in New Hampshire, from time to time, there are these little feuds that go on in the town between uh, individual citizens or groups against the uh, public officials, the police, the fire department. Does this more or less open the door to that uh, someone stalking public official under the guise of uh, just mm -hmm. the condition of the still? I don't know. Um, I think maybe you can already do that. I mean, as you, I don't know whether there, yeah, there is someone here from Keene, uh, but I, I know there has been an issue there with people following yeah. the, the uh, meter readers around. Um, and the courts have basically said they have a right to do that. I, I think they already have a right to do that, um, but this goes this goes well beyond that. This uh, allow would allow you to record them uh, not in a public place or, or not in a place where the public ordinarily has access. This would allow you to record them in their office or anywhere else, and, and that's our concern about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for your question. You would agree that a public servant takes an oath. Yes. That's established. Is it not true that public servants are already responsible for everything they say and do? And if that's also a fact, why would you oppose that? I would think that if they decided and took an oath to be a public servant, <coughs> that they give up their right to be completely private, that everything they do is under that scrutiny. Would you believe that to be true? Uh, no. I, I believe that you may believe that, but I, I would not agree that everything that they do, I, I believe that public servants, whether it's legislators, uh, workers in a town office, school teachers, whatever, there are many, many, many situations where they have private conversations that they have a right to expect to not be uh, subject to public scrutiny. Follow up? Follow up. A public servant is being recorded, for an example, in a tax office. They're performing a duty that they're supposed to perform. So if the interaction between the two people is being recorded, it's, that's reality. You're not changing anything. So I'm still confused why that would be I guess I'm not understanding the, the situation you're referring to. A, a public servant. Yep. You're interacting with a tax official. You so record that in your interaction. Yes. It's reality. So what is the fear of the recording? If you're just recording what's actually happening. I don't understand the opposition. I'm I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I can give an answer that would that would convince you. But <coughs> again, I'll reiterate that I believe there are many situations where where a public official or a public employee has a conversation that they have a legitimate expectation to not be subject to public scrutiny. It might be a conversation between two legislators on this committee. Um, there's innumerable situations. I would I'd just like to point out that we only have another seven minutes left in this hearing, and I have nine more people that want to speak. I'll pass. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris Jasko.